Welcome back guys. Here is another tutorial on how to find area and perimeter. Today we're going to look at how to find the area and perimeter of a parallelogram. What is a parallelogram? It is a four-sided shape, otherwise known as a quadrilateral, that has two sets of parallel sides. Typically they look like this. As you can see in my parallelogram, this side and this side are parallel, and this side and this side are also parallel. This is a parallelogram. Today we're going to work with how to find the area and perimeter of a parallelogram, and we're going to start first with perimeter. Now when you, if you go back and watch my tutorial on how to find the area and perimeter of rectangles, you'll know already how I expect students to find the perimeter of a rectangle, and I'm going to ask them to use the same way for a parallelogram. So here's that process very quickly in case you're, you don't remember or you need a refresher. I'm going to assign the length of my sides as 2 centimeters and 4 centimeters. Now just like with a rectangle, if this one is 2 centimeters, this one will also be 2 centimeters, as well as if this one is 4 centimeters, this one will also be 4 centimeters. The first thing a student needs to do to find the perimeter of a parallelogram is divide each side into the number of pieces that the number indicates. In this case, I'm going to divide it into 2 on this side and this side, and 4 on this side and this side. It's going to look like this when you're finished. Now I've divided each of my four sides into the appropriate number of pieces. You can see that this one has two pieces and this one has two pieces, as this one has four pieces and this one has four pieces. Now I'm going to ask that the students write numbers down, and I'm going to do that for you, to show how many pieces there are all together, and that's going to be your perimeter. When I'm finished, it will look like this. You can see that the biggest number I wrote was 12. That means that the perimeter of this parallelogram is 12 centimeters. Your student's answers for perimeter should be expressed like this. In this case, we're writing P equals 12 centimeters. P stands for perimeter, and it must be a capital letter as it is the universal mathematical symbol for perimeter. 12 is how many centimeters around our parallelogram is, and we added our label, which in this case is centimeters. This is the unit that we used to measure this, or this parallelogram. Now we're going to move on to how to find the area of a parallelogram, and it is a little bit different than how we find the area for a rectangle. Although if you speak to your student and talk to them about what we did at table when we learned about parallelograms, where we got to cut up some shapes and move some pieces around, they will tell you that a parallelogram is basically just a rectangle in disguise. In a parallelogram, you will typically have a marking inside the, the shape that will show the height of the figure. It looks like this you will notice that I have added a dotted line that goes from the top of the shape all the way down to the bottom of the shape and I've also added this little square symbol which shows us that it hits the bottom of that shape at a right angle. In this case, this line is five centimeters long. Now this is called the height of a parallelogram. When we find the area of a parallelogram, we are going to multiply the base which is the side of the parallelogram where that right angle hits, and the height of the parallelogram. In this case, the piece of information that becomes useless is two centimeters. We don't need to use that information. We have no reason to look at that again outside of finding the perimeter. The formula for finding the area of a parallelogram looks like this. Area equals base, capital B, times height, capital H. Again, we talked about the capital A being area because it is the universal mathematical symbol for area. In this case, the two numbers that I'm going to be plugging in are 4 centimeters for the base and 5 centimeters for the height, and I'm going to multiply those numbers together to find my answer. When I'm finished, my answer will look like this. You can see that an area problem where we are actually doing an algorithm or multiplying numbers together has two steps. I ask that students write down their first step, which in this case says a equals 4 times 5. The second step is to write their answer, and this is how we work with equations in our classroom. The answer in this case is a, or area, equals 20 centimeters squared. Now again, we talked about this in the rectangle video as well, but if your student is comfortable putting this little tiny 2 above their unit of measurement, that's fine. We know in here that it stands for the length, or the base in this case, and the height of a figure. Those are the two dimensions, and that's where that two comes into play. If your student is not comfortable with that little tiny two notation, they can use this one down here. 
And this is the exact same answer, it's just written differently, 20 square centimeters. You'll notice that we put down our answer, which is 20, because 4 times 5 is 20. Square, because essentially, if we were to cut this rectangle or this triangle off of here and move it over here, as we did today in class, they would have a rectangle and thus squares when they divided it up to prove that their answer was correct. So that's where we have to put the square, and then the centimeter is our unit of measurement. Again, the area, the formula for the area of a parallelogram is A equals B times H. I hope this was helpful, and I hope this helps you get through your homework tonight. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to call me. Uh, my phone number in the classroom is 228-0968, and my email is brinker at d11.org.